Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be using the new card kit called Icing on the Cupcake and we're going to be using the stamp set which is this stamp set here. It has all of these great sentiments. There is kind of a scripty font along with a regular generic font and they go really nicely together to create some really fun sentiments. So we are going to feature one of those on our cards today. There's also this great Sprinkles and Cupcakes Dynamics die set. So it has all of these pieces here to create a really large cupcake. You have the little flags that you can add to the top. There's a candle, sprinkles, even a cherry. And then of course the top and bottom of the cupcake. And we've also included shaker pouches so that you can turn your cupcake topper into a shaker pouch. So you can kind of go either direction with this kit. You can use it as a shaker card or you can just create a cupcake with all of the components of the die set. So I went ahead and cut out some pieces of white cardstock that measure four inches by five and a quarter. And these are going to be the front of our cards and they're going to layer over top of some colorful card bases. I'm actually gonna create three cards so I will cut one more additional piece of white. And the three cardstock colors we're going to use for the bases are sour apple, blue raspberry, and razzleberry, which all come in the card kit. I've also brought in some natural cardstock that I'm gonna use for the bottom of the cupcake. And I also have some heavyweight vellum and you'll see what we're gonna do with that in just a minute here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and die cut all of the pieces here that I'm going to need to create my cupcakes. And then I'm going to come back and start to assemble our cards. And as I mentioned earlier, I did decide to do three designs. So I cut out an additional piece of white cardstock. And then I also have the three colored cardstocks all cut down so I can create card bases that measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches once folded. So I'm just using my scoring board there to score them and get them folded. And now we're going to start to create the card. So what I wanna do for the three cards today is I wanna show you different ways that you can create little window cards in the front of the card base using the top of the cupcake. So we're gonna create two shaker cards, two different versions, and we're also going to create just an open window. So the first one here is going to be one of the shaker cards. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up the cupcake top onto the white panel. And once I know exactly where I wanna position it, I'm just holding it in place, and then I'm positioning this over top of our card base. You wanna make sure the card base is open so you don't cut through the back. And you're gonna run it through the die cut machine exactly like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut the cupcake shape right through the white panel as well as that card base. And since this one is going to be a shaker card, I need to stamp out the sentiment portion onto the panel before I start to add any dimension with the shaker pouch. So I have the stamp set here and I'm trying to figure out which one I wanna use and I decided to use Happy Birthday Sweet Friend for all three card designs. And I'm going to do something here that you definitely don't have to do if it makes you a little bit nervous, but I'm going to cut my stamp. I find it much easier to just cut the stamp apart and use each of the sentiments separately when I don't wanna stamp them together, but you can easily mask this if cutting your stamps apart is not something that you wanna do. So either way will work, just kind of pick out the sentiment you wanna use, or you can completely change the design and not separate the sentiments at all. So just whatever works for you is what you can do on your cards, but I wanted to show you how I like to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp out the sweet friend portion onto the card base. The other part of the sentiment we are going to use, but I'm gonna emboss that and put it onto a little sentiment strip instead of having it stamped with this main sentiment that we're stamping on the panel. Once I have it stamped out there in black ink, I'm going to take the bottom portion of the cupcake and I have some natural ink, which is the same color as the card stock. And I'm just using a blender brush here and I'm adding a little bit of ink to this little piece here. This is just going to add some shading and definition to this so it looks a little bit more dimensional and not so flat on the finished card. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start to assemble the shaker portion. So if you're not familiar with our shaker pouches, all of our pouches have a little lip around the outside edge. And what you need to do is just add some adhesive around the shape or the window that you're going to be adding the pouch into. So I just used eighth inch score tape and I added it all the way around the back area of that panel. And then I removed the adhesive backing and positioned it right over top of that shaker pouch and pressed down, and that adhered that pouch inside of our panel. Now I flipped it back over again because now we need to fill up the pouch and close it off so that everything stays inside. And this is where that heavyweight vellum is going to come into play. I've trimmed this down so it's slightly smaller than that card panel, and we're going to use this for the backer of the shaker window. You can cut your vellum even smaller, but I like to keep it almost the same size as the panel so I don't end up with some weird lines kind of underneath the panel. If you have a thinner cardstock, you can kind of see that extra layer underneath. So I find the best way to take that away is to just use a very large piece that's almost the same size as the panel. So once I had the adhesive all over the back of the panel as well as around that shaker area once again, 
I'm going to fill this in with a bunch of tiny little colorful sequins. You can use anything here that you like to fill in your shaker pouches. You could use clear sequins if you don't want to add a lot of color. The sky is the limit. It's completely up to you what you want to include inside the pouch. But once you have everything in there, just put your backer piece on and press down firmly. And now you can see all of our little sequins are trapped inside of that cupcake piece. So when I layer it over top of our card base, we have the window that we've cut in the front. And when we close the card, we see that colored cardstock kind of coming through that vellum. I love this one because it kind of gives the cupcake a frosted look because you can kind of see the green, but it's not super prominent. So it's just a fun way to create a little window in that card front that this recipient doesn't even realize until they actually open the card. And since the heavyweight vellum is a little bit opaque, I like to position this one upside down. So I like to actually look through the back of the cardstock opening just to be able to line that up and see exactly where the windows meet together. Once I had that lined up, I pressed down and now our card panel is adhered perfectly on the front and we have that window perfectly lined up over top. To finish off the sentiment, like I mentioned before, I am going to stamp the other part of the sentiment that we cut off of this one onto a piece of black cardstock. I'm going to add white embossing powder, and then I'm gonna heat set this with my heat tool and trim it down into a small strip. I used a little bit of dimensional adhesive on the back of this, and I'm adhering it right over top of the bottom portion of that cupcake. So now we have that fun vellum window. We have those sequins kind of floating inside of that cupcake topper. So all we need to do now is add a little bit more color to this card front to finish it off. So what I've done is I've die cut a bunch of candles and the little sprinkle pieces, and I've cut them out of all three colors of cardstock so that I can use them on all three of my card designs. And I'm going to trim off the bottom of the candle here and add glue to the back and position this right at the top of the cupcake. And the reason I trimmed off the bottom was so that I could line it up so it was on top of the shaker pouch and I didn't have to actually layer it over top. Once I had it in place, I'm just going to press down to make sure it's exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to use some additional glue and add a bunch of these little sprinkles. This did take a little bit of time. These are very small, but I love the look of having that little bit of dimension since they're cut from cardstock, rather than just adding them with ink or with a marker. And then finally, all we need to do is cover up the top portion of the candle since the flame is not going to be pink in the finished card. So I have some gold stickles here and I'm just pushing them out onto that flame piece. I'm adding quite a bit here, making sure not to get it onto the white area. And then I'm gonna come in with my tweezers and I'm gonna use those to kind of move the stickles around and kind of get an even layer and make sure I've covered all of that pink. These are also great for any of the little stray stickles that kind of go off the edge. You can use your tweezers to pick that up. And now we have a finished card where we have the fun sprinkles kind of floating over top of the cupcake. We have that really cute vellum window and we have the candle included as well. So now that we have that first card done, I just wanna show you how I created the windows in the second two cards. The card creation is exactly the same, so I'm not gonna go through the whole process of making the cards. But for this second window here, rather than using that vellum, I decided to use a piece of acetate. The acetate is completely clear, so you're going to see perfectly through the front of the card right to the inside. You can kind of see the sequins kind of look like they're floating in space because there's not really anything showing behind them. And here's the difference between the vellum, which has that opaque look to it and it almost looks frosted, and then the acetate is completely clear, so you really see that green. So here's a look at all three of the finished cards. They have exactly the same card design. But for the third card, I did an open window and didn't even add a shaker pouch. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that one. This one has the blue raspberry card base and I just cut that opening in the front and then assembled an entire cupcake on the inside. So I cut out the topper with the same blue raspberry and used some ink to kind of highlight it. And then I also added the cupcake bottom on the inside of the card as well as the outside to make that cupcake look complete. And then I did use silver stickles to decorate the top of the cupcake. This one here is the first one we created fully on screen, which has the vellum piece in behind there. And then this is the second card we created where we use the acetate. So you really see that pink showing through the background. So that is three different ways that you can create fun window effects in your card designs. You can see through all three of these designs, but we've added a fun shaker element to two of them and then left that open window on the third. I hope today's video gave you some ideas on ways that you can use the new icing on the cupcake card kit to create some really fun and unique window cards. If you did enjoy today's video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of future videos on the MFT YouTube channel. As always, I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.